Welcome back to the channel, everyone. It's Jeff Guy here. Today, we're going over the trips tight end formation in my Patriots mini scheme. Make sure you follow, comment, like if you're enjoying these videos. This formation is a banger. I love trips tight end because it has so many quick hitting routes that are great against man coverage and zone coverage in short yardage situations. So that's fourth and ones, fourth and threes, goal line, whenever you need it. This is my go-to formation, and I have some go-to plays that score me points in games and win me those matchups. As always, we're going to go over the audibles. So first, we go with Pat Slant, which is the best play in this formation and probably one of the best plays in Madden 22. We'll go over that one. I have RPO zone alert bubble at triangle, halfback angle at L1, and Pat's Y post at R1. I score like 60 to 70% of my red zone touchdowns using this tight end quick corner route. It's so deadly against man coverage, and most zone coverages don't even follow it. It works even better if you have mid out or short out elite. You don't need them, but it just makes it so much overpowered and a necessity to use if you have this performation and that ability on your tight end. So for example, we have Derek Stingley, who's a really, really good corner out there. I think he's gonna get open here. We're gonna try it out. So look, open, and he just catches the ball. Like no one can cover it. And unless your user is there lurking it, it's probably not gonna get you know stopped. Here we go again. Throw it, catch. I think that was incomplete based on the feet, but you get the idea. Even in these formations where there's a superstar corner out there, most of the time it's gonna get open. That was a case where it didn't, but he was in zone coverage and I just waited and he still got open. This play is so great and it sets up the entire rest of the mini scheme based on how powerful this tight end route is. If you come out looking for it and their users going to it, one thing I'll do is I'll take my circle receiver put them on a slant and then motion and motion snap them so that the user has to at least commit there, leaving the tight end wide open again. Again, like this play is so, so powerful. I don't know why more people aren't using it. On the left side, this play also gives you a slant, a drag, and a flat route. You can kind of do what you want with those. My biggest use case for them is this slant route from your square receiver. Essentially, if you're, the user commits to the tight end, that should leave the, the seam and the slant wide open. So I'll do like a, a seam route to take that safety, if it's, especially if it's cover two, take the safety out of the play. And then I will uh, take either my drag or my slant, which both should be just wide open for quick chunk gains if they're covering the tight end route. Like, try out this play and let me know what you think. Like, it's so overpowered in my offense. I really want to see you guys, like, send me clips, like, send me DMs, whatever. Show me this play in action because it is just so, so great. So the next play in this mini scheme is RPO Zone Alert Bubble. It's an RPO like the name says. Uh, and essentially, you have two reads. You can either run the inside zone or you can take the bubble route. I will use this play as my base running play, even though I don't plan on even using the RPO, just to give myself the option in case they make a defensive adjustment that works in my favor. For example, this look right here is a man look because you see Tanner Muse, that linebacker, is lined up right outside Dimey Brown. That's a matchup I like because it's a linebacker on a superstar receiver but I probably won't run it just because it looks like man. So here's a look where it's actually not man. We have Tanner Muse lined up over Tan Chizena and Dimey Brown, both are 94 plus speed receivers who are superstar abilities. This is a formation where I will look to run the bubble screen. I just have to watch out for this end who looks to be unblocked over the side. So let's try out and let's see what happens. The one thing that I have to say to you guys is that you have to practice, practice, practice this play because it can get lurked if you're not careful and you don't know what you're looking at. Especially on Ultimate Team where you have some of these insane 99 speed acrobats and lurkers and all that stuff. You have to be careful about doing RPOs and, and quick hitters like this because you can get lurked and lose the ball pretty easily. That being said, let's try this out. Bang, so it was, it was basically a three on two. That worked so well because it was a three on two and we were able to just, you know, dink our open receiver. He was wide open and quick gain of nine plus pretty easily. 
The third play here is halfback angle, and this play is a great complement to Pat's slant because while Pat's slant forces the user to the outside, halfback angle actually forces them to play inside. So if you are alternating between these two plays and trying to get the scheme or trying to scheme this, the user out of position, this is a great way to do that. And here's a look at the flood concept where everything is shifting over to the left. And if it's either man or like a soft zone outside coverage, this angle route should be wide open, especially if the user commits to the tight end going on the out route. And of course, depending on the defense or whatever else you're trying to do in the game, you can always go to the left side of the field. The point of having this formation and having this play is to draw attention away from the pat slant, which we'll keep running over and over again. If they don't respect Derrick Henry going over the middle, they deserve to lose. The fourth play in this mini scheme is called Pat's Y Post, and where every other play is designed to hit a, sh like a short route or a, a quick hitter for a red zone touchdown, score, or first down, whatever, this play is kind of designed to hit something deep. So there are obviously different ways to set up this play, and there are different you know, decisions you need to make based on what defense they're in. But the way I'll set this one up is I'll put my square receiver on either a smart route or a zig to hold any zone coverages for this circle receiver corner route to get deep. And then I'll put my triangle receiver on a slant, creating like a, a concept where the user defender, if they have to guard the slant, they're gonna leave the flat open for the running back. And if they guard the running back flat, they're probably gonna leave the slant open. And of course, if it's cover two or cover four, X as this route should get open. It's a little bit of a risky throw, but if you believe in your quarterback, you have gunslinger, and if you have like a mid uh, or an inside deep elite tight end, this is a very, very powerful formation and should get you a lot of yards. So this looks like a man concept. So my read is probably gonna be Dan Chizena because he is just unbelievable, but let's run this play and see what happens. Cool, so it's not man, but it was zone, and we were able to keep with Dan Gizena. He's just wide open. So much got open on that play just because of the way we set it up. Try out this mini scheme. Let me know what you think. Comment down below different ways you can set up these plays, different things you've tried. Uh, let me know how it's going with this or any other mini scheme videos. Subscribe, comment, follow for more. See ya.